Hey, Slater, welcome back. Uh, how did it feel out there to play? Uh, I think it's been 35 games or something like that since you, you played a game. How did it feel? Yeah, it felt good. Um, you know, you, you don't know how much you miss that game day routine. Um, just that nervousness, that uh, anxiousness to play. Uh, you wake up this morning and uh, you get those butterflies going and uh, yeah, just a real blessing to be out there and, um, and back, back in the mix. When you uh, sustain an injury like you did with the collarbone, when is there any apprehension to make a hit or take a hit or to see how it's feeling or, or going in there? Is there any apprehension in that, in that regard? Uh, I think there was to start back. Um, I've been practicing now for uh, probably over a month. So uh, we did all kinds of drills to um, mimic some battling, uh, some hits. I think there's still going to be uh, learning curves to, to having that. I talked to actually Connor about uh, he had the similar surgery that I did. So, um, and he, he says that, uh, you know, you'll get to a point where you just stop, stop thinking about it. So, um, yeah, a lot of good practices, a lot of good uh, physical play, and, um, and it felt good out there today. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Kind of funny, you played Slater, uh, you had a real good series in the bubble last year against the Oilers. Um, maybe part of the reason why they got you. Uh, and so did Matthew Highmore, who scored a couple goals today. Uh, does that seem like a long time ago that you were coming in and playing on the other team, getting basically ready for the playoffs just like you are now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy that um, we're back to playoff time. Um, it feels like on one hand, it feels like yesterday being here for the bubble. And then, uh, yeah, it, felt, it feels like a long time ago uh, on the other hand. So, um, and as for Highmore, he uh, he's just a solid player out there. And uh, we were having a couple laughs on the ice today. And uh, yeah, he had a really good series for us last year when, uh, when I was in Chicago. For sure. Uh, so you kind of slot in as that guy that, I mean, maybe, who knows, maybe you're playing on Wednesday. I don't know the answer to that, but you kind of slot in as that guy that's defensive depth and you're going to be around for this team when they need you. Um, is it easy, difficult being that guy when it's you know, one game in a long, long time and your next game is going to be right in the heat of a playoff battle? Um, is it difficult? Probably. Um... You know, coming out today and playing was difficult after um, a long time away. So I tried to treat today more than it was um, based on my pregame prep or, um, you know, on the ice. I tried to be uh, as intense as I could. So uh, I didn't treat it as if uh, it was a nothing game with, with no um, ramifications for the playoffs or anything like that. I tried to treat it as the biggest game of my season. So... Um, but yeah, we'll wait to see what happens on uh, Wednesday. Thank you. Jim Matheson, Post Media. How strange would that have been if you'd scored on your first shift uh, this afternoon, Slater? Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> it would have been like yeah, you hadn't missed a beat like riding a bicycle. <laughs> uh, sliding in and scoring on your first shift. Yeah, except I rode the bicycle a lot for the last two months, so. <laughs> okay. Um, did the fact that you had seven defensemen, did that make it a little easier for you or more difficult because you play with all sorts of different people? Um, I didn't mind it. I thought it was, uh, it was nice to try and um, play with everybody and every partner gives you a little bit of different uh, a different style, a different uh, look. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed my time with uh, all four of the righties today. And, um, you know, whatever Tip decides here going forward or um, I'll be ready whenever I get called. So, Reiner Schrag, TSN. Uh, Slater, just if you can remind us a little bit on your timeline. When, when this first happened, um, what was the word you were given on how long it was going to be? Did it feel at the time like the playoffs would be a possibility? And what did you kind of go through to make sure you were ready in time? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, uh, so whenever it happened, uh, we tried to do some math on um, 
10 to 12 weeks was a number that I well, was a number that they gave me and uh, 10 to 12 weeks 10 weeks would have brought me to May 1st um, from the time of the injury so that was kind of the timeline we were hoping for then um, you know um, Everything happened with Vancouver uh, with the COVID situation, and it ended up pushing some games back into the later in in May, which ended up being a blessing in disguise for me, um, that I was going to be able to um, let it heal all the way to 12 weeks, and then uh, and then be able to play today. So uh, that was kind of the timeline. But uh, as for the every day that I went through, gosh, there was. Uh, ups and downs just like any injury you go through but uh the support of everybody back home uh really kept me strong and uh allowed me to come back today like I did normally in a normal year you would have maybe a couple of scratches and and you know the odd guy here or there that you could get out there and work out with do you think having a taxi squad of guys that all need to push themselves and all need to be game ready does that end up helping an injured player quite a bit, just in getting up to speed and being ready faster? Yeah, maybe it did, actually. Um, we're able to have some pretty intense three-on-three uh, -three games whenever the team was playing. Um, you know, myself and uh, the taxi squad guys would, would get a pretty intense three-on-three -three game going where uh, we're trying to be physical. Obviously, nobody's running each other, but... Um, trying to be as physical as we can and, and get that game intensity just in case one of us does get called. So uh, I think that that did play a factor into um, coming back prepared or uh, as prepared as I could be.